everybody. Thank you for joining us again. I am here with uh, a guest teacher, a featured teacher, Jeff Hand. Uh, Jeff is uh, an incredible teacher and player. He's played in a number of national and international tournaments. Uh, you've been teaching for decades. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. You're most welcome. So, Jeff, you told me you had an interesting hand uh, inspired by a question that you get from time to time. What's the question? Well, the question is, how many high card points do you need to make a Grand Slam? Okay. And it sounds like it should be a quick answer. What's the answer? Well, the the what every bridge teacher will teach you is you normally need about 37 points to make a Grand Slam. You can't be missing an ace. Slam. What? You can't be missing an ace. You can't be missing an ace. But we're going to see in today's hand that you can make a grand slam with seven high card points. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. All right. You see the hand there, right? All right. Let me uh, let me bring it on up. Okay. I, I thought you had something up your sleeves, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Your partner deals and passes, and your right-hand opponent opens the bidding four hearts. <laughs> Now, an open bid of four hearts is a preemptive opening bid, but at no, when nobody's vulnerable, there it's going to be about, they should have about seven or maybe eight tricks in their own hand. Okay. And it's not all, some people will take some liberties and make that bid with a minimum opening strength. They might have opened one heart instead, but they decided they had so much distribution. They just wanted to make it hard for the opponents to get in the bid in the open four hearts. So if anyway, is, so this is the only contract East will want to play, and East is just going to bid bid it. East just went ahead and bid four hearts. They say, I know I want hearts to be the trump suit. I'm going to take a shot to make 10 tricks. I don't can't make 10 tricks all by myself, because if I did, I would have been strong enough to open two clubs. But I normally have a weak hand of less than uh, 10, 12, less than about 12 high card points. But I might be pushing that level a little bit you can't control what the opponents do sometimes they might open uh, four hearts with 13 14 high card points you don't know for sure but they don't have a lot of defensive strength and they have a lot of offensive strength if hearts are trumped they figure they can win a lot of tricks all right well we can't let them get away with that can we no no you're not going to let them compete with this hand the south hand you've got six spades the ace queen and seven diamonds. You've got two voids. Jeff, they say five, five come alive. What do they say about six, seven? Uh, <laughs> go to heaven. <laughs> Take us there, Jeff. Take us there. Okay. Well, on this hand, since you don't have, you have maybe one defensive trick against a four heart contract. And if spades or diamonds are Trump, you can win a whole lot of tricks. You choose to compete and you go ahead and bid, uh, Four spades, so. Okay. Where do I, I don't, yeah, okay, good. And now the next opponent. I'm guessing West has a pretty strong hand. He does have a good hand. He does have a really strong hand. And he's just going to say, I don't want anything to do with you letting you play that contract. He's going ahead and bidding six hearts. Mm-hmm. Okay. And your partner comes to live and bids six spades. <laughs> and East, who opened the bidding, says, I'm not going to let you play in six spades. I'm going to bid seven. I'm sorry, undo. Let me undo that. I'm going to bid seven hearts. And you might have a defensive trick at least, but when they're bidding so crazily, probably somebody's void in spades. But maybe you would go ahead and pass. It's about as good as anything. Nah. You're going to bid seven spades? <laughs> well, if you, if you pass, your partner's going to bid seven spades. Okay, so one of us will. One of uh, you will bid seven spades, and you get to the Grand Slam. And one of the opponents is going to double you. Of course. Now go ahead and bid seven spades if you want, just so we can complete the bidding. Okay. I mean... If we come this close, <laughs> six high guard points. And they're going to double. Okay. So can I redouble? <laughs> I shouldn't gonna, redouble. No, you're not going to. You don't know that you can actually make this. You're you're when you're when when you're when you bid seven spades, 
you thought maybe the opponent's going to make seven hearts and you're taking a sacrifice bet. Right, right. If you go down one or two tricks and they can make seven hearts, you'd much rather lose 100 or 300 points instead of losing 1,510 points. Right. Now, and Jeff, I, I, I'm laughing a lot. Even before the lead comes out and we see partner's hand, this isn't just a joke, though. Like, with the, you know, we're competing in this competitive auction. Clearly, uh, all of our shapes are just totally nutty with voids. And we can't let them get away with it. I play a lot of bridge and I get two voids dealt to me about once every five years. So this is unusual to be dealt two voids. Uh about every 10 years, in recent years, I've picked up my hand and I've had either 10 black cards or I've got all 13 black cards or all 13 red cards. But they don't happen very often. Right, Having right. two voices is very infrequent. And this hand's going to be even more infrequent. Should I make the opening lead? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what Let's we're see doing. What They're leading the ace of clubs. And look, dummy's got two voids. <laughs> now... You start to look at the hand. Dummy's got six spades. You've got six spades. The opponents have one spade, the king. You can draw their trump, but what are you going to do with all these diamond losers in your hand or all the club losers and dummy? Well, you don't have much choice on this first trick. So you're going to play the two of clubs from dummy. You still follow suit, and you're going to trump it. Now let's take a minute to plan our play. Dumb, four, three clubs have been played already. How many clubs do the defenders still have? So we can see nine of them. Yeah, so three played on the trick. And Dummy still has six more. That's nine. They still have four clubs. Do you realize that if you win the ace of spades now and draw their only spade out, the king, that you'll still have four spades left in your hand to trump all those clubs, even if somebody has all four missing, all the four missing clubs, I don't care if West has all the clubs or East. Mm. You can draw all those missing clubs. Mm. Right. We just need to make sure that even if the remaining clubs break four nil, the four four more rounds will be able to rough in South hand. Exactly. We can draw one round of trumps to get that king out. Exactly. So go ahead and let's draw their ace of spades right now. So I believe that the ace of spades will draw their king. And now let's start doing some cross roughing. Now, cross roughing is a really nifty technique because you end up using only one of your trumps to win a trick. Here, dummy still has five spades and you have four. You can trump diamonds and dummy and clubs back in your hand and win the next nine tricks just by cross-roughing. And in the process, you'll eliminate all the clubs in the opponent's hands, and Dummy's going to be able to win the rest of the tricks with the long clubs. So go ahead and lead a diamond and trumpet and Dummy. Can I ask a quick question before doing that? Absolutely. So I, 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 I got as far as what you described, thinking, okay, so even if there are just four remaining clubs, we can turn at least two more of ours into winners and it might break even better for us except this is you know, a wacky Absolutely. game we also have that long diamond suit why are we setting up the long club suit for winners instead of the long diamond suit well you can probably do either one and okay. since you have seven diamonds the opponents have six and when you're missing an even number of cards like six they most likely divide unevenly most mm -hmm. likely one opponent has four and one has two. The second most likely division of their diamonds would be three and three. Mm. But when, when a hand is like this and they the bidding's gone so crazy, right? You've got two voids, dummy's got two voids, you might run into bad distribution. But it's very good to trump diamonds and dummy and count the diamonds the opponents play. And trump right. comes back to your hand. I guess we can see how it goes. We're gonna be cross roughing back and forth. Exactly. And we'll see how it uh how, uh, what the distribution is. 
I just need to make sure I don't misclick. Wow, both opponents followed with two diamonds. They both followed with two clubs. Very good. Okay, so two it's clubs like left and three diamonds left? Four diamonds are still left. Four diamonds still left. All right. They've only got two diamonds left, and they've only got two clubs left. And surprisingly, the clubs broke evenly. So we Thumbs got it. They're all now worth tricks. So can we claim well, the rest? You could, but I'm going to have you trump a diamond, and I'm going to tell you a little story about what they used to do back in college. Okay. So go ahead and lead a diamond. All right. And trump it in dummy. Now, back in college... And when somebody had a lot of a lot of trumps and they drew all the trumps, sometimes they had so many trumps they could afford to play another one. And they would just jokingly say, I'm going to lead out another trump just in case there's some lurkers out there. Maybe I miscounted. <laughs> so go ahead and play another club and you can trump this one. You know you've counted the clubs. You know they have no more clubs, but go ahead and trump a club just to be 100% certain that you didn't miscount. That's not a club. Oh, sorry. I <laughs> misclicked. Go ahead and click trump the club. You can go ahead and trump this. And now you're now you got extra safety. You got you're sure that you counted right. They have no more clubs. So right. dummy's good. Trump a diamond and run all the clubs. Now and we got them. You, in the same process, all your diamonds are good. Oh. So you, you have all sorts of ways. You can win ah. a lot of tricks in your hand and win all the diamonds if you want. Or you can go ahead and win all the clubs now if you want. Right. So it doesn't matter if we're ending up in South Hand because we we also knew we made those remaining three diamonds. Exactly. Win. Well, Jeff, what a wild hand. Um, oh, this, this is a very wild hand. Now, despite it being a wild hand, what's something we should take away from this hand. Well, we'll play the last trick and then we'll I'll talk about it so everybody can see all the cards. This was what you were doing when you were cross roughing is since after the first trick, you still had five spades and, and you won the ace of spades, you still had four spades in your hand and dummy still had five. And you can win nine tricks with those five spades just by cross roughing. It's cross roughing is an amazingly wonderful source of tricks, but a mm. pure cross rough when that's all you do is something you don't do that often. Mm. I mean, it's possible you might play some hands where at tricks eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, you're cross roughing every trick, but those don't occur very often. More often than not, you'll either draw some trumps first and then do some cross roughing. And here you did draw one trump first, or you might, uh, cross rough until you establish some long suit mm. you can just cross rough for a series of series of tricks and uh when you bid seven spades you had no clue that you could actually come up with 13 tricks you didn't know that your diamond seven card diamond suit would match a void in partner's hand and partner didn't know with that seven card club suit that would match a void in your hand i have don't think i've ever seen in my entire life where both declare has two voids and dummy has two voids. <laughs> so if anyone comes across one, please let us know. Oh, absolutely. And now, now one more thing about this hand. Yeah. If East West got to play in seven hearts, how many tricks would they make? Oh, all of them. Yeah, because you can see they have they have all 13 hearts. They're not going to lose any trump tricks. The, the east hand is void in spades. They can trump spades. They don't lose any spade tricks. They've got the ace, king, queen of clubs, ace, king, queen of diamonds. They can make 13 tricks with hearts as trump, and north, south can make 13 tricks with spades as trump. Mm. The final takeaway from this hand should be point count is very accurate if your hand is balanced and partner's hand is balanced. Mm -hmm. But when hands get much more extreme, much more unbalanced, especially with a good trump fit, uh, point count loses accuracy and you might make. I've had opponents in a world in a national champ in a world championship. I've had the opponents bit a grant uh, had a bit of a slam against me uh, when they have uh, 
less than half the high card points. And they, they were called for the slam. We could mm -hmm. not defeat it. Mm -hmm. So, so I why, haven't why, had this, this, that. this is uh, the hand illustrates so clearly high card points aren't everything when finding your strength, especially when we have to consider how our hand fits together with our partners. Absolutely, absolutely. Jeff, I so appreciate you taking the time joining us for this video. We'll have to have you back very soon. And um, to everyone who joined us watching, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment be below. Be sure to thank Jeff uh, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.